You guys are not gonna believe this. It goes like this. The number for the speed of light is the same coordinates as the pyramids of Giza. Considering this is one of my favorite examples of the collective aneurysm that is pseudo-archaeology, I riddle me this. Riddle me this. Milo, did you know that the original meter distance was defined as one ten millionth of the distance from the poles to the equator? And that the polar circumference of the Earth is nearly exactly 40 million meters? With eight, 40 million, 8,000 meters? Yeah, pseudo-archaeology. No, talk about pseudo-physicists. So I, I want to I wanna point something out here. This is where it gets that these, these archaeologists who don't understand how the universe works to begin with shouldn't even be resorted to as experts on this matter. Because if you can't understand the sciences of what we have today, you won't be able to understand the sciences of people that you think had less than us if we're going to just assume they had less. But... You know, let's let's do some math here, actually. Let's do some math here. So, I find it interesting that you think that the entire fucking universe used the metric system while America's still using Imperial. Do you not think that the aliens that built the pyramids would have used something else? Who? No. No, the Egyptians had the foot long, long before everyone else. The Romans had a foot, and the Greek also had a foot. The Roman foot is 2.96 meters. The Egyptian foot, hmm, this is this is kind of weird. How is the Egyptian foot exactly 0.3 meters? It's exactly 30 centimeters? Hmm, that's kind of weird. Why, you know, if they were such widely created units, you would think that there would be more decimal places there to have to make them line up. Let's just assume you're right, Milo. Okay, let's um, let's let's think this through. Just do this experiment real fast here. If it's just so outrageous and outlandish that these people had any kind of science, let's find the relevant period of a photon that is the wavelength of an Egyptian foot. The period is one divided by the frequency. So what we do is we take the distance and divide it by the speed of light. You get meters to cancel out and you get one second. So that'll give you your period and to get the frequency inverted. Let's look at the period here. What is this? Oh my, wow. Almost exactly one nanosecond. Whoa, that's, hmm, that's pretty odd. That's what, what, a, what a weird coincidence for that to be. Let's check one of these other ones. What are the rest of these? Let's go through this kind of quickly. The Royal Cubit, the accepted version is 0.525 meters. Oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> but then there's also the 0.523. They both straddle 1.75 nanoseconds. What do you know? Oh my God, that's what a coincidence. The small cubit at 45 centimeters. Oh my God, 1.5 nanoseconds. Oh, what? The shoulder necks at 37.5 centimeters. Whoa, look at that, 1.25 nanoseconds. Okay, I'll give you this one, the great span at 26 centimeters. Doesn't come out very nice, it's 8.67. It's really close to 8.66 repeated, so I'll, I'll just hold on, we'll, we got more. Small span at 22.5 centimeters, 0.75 nanoseconds. The double hand at 15 centimeters, look at that, Ooh, it's 0.5 nanoseconds. The fist at 11.25 centimeters, 0.375 nanoseconds. And another one that's not as pleasing, but we got the hand at 9.375 centimeters, comes in at 0.3127 nanoseconds. Again, it's not a bit strong yet. All right, back to the palm. We're at 7.5 centimeters, coming in at 0.25 nanoseconds. And we got the finger at 1.875 comes in at 0 0.0625 now look at this it's it doesn't seem like there's much of a trend here but if you look at all these periods i'm gonna go through a 0.0625 then 0.25 then 0.3127 and this is okay and this is where it gets better 0.375 then 0.5 then 0.75 then 0.875 then you've got one one nanosecond and 1.25 nanoseconds, 1.5 nanoseconds, 1.75 nanoseconds, and two nanoseconds. If we even go a little bit further, we're gonna look at the rod, which is 100 cubits, and then the league, which is 20,000 cubits, is we got 1.75 and 3.5. See this trend here? That's pretty, pretty odd, isn't it? What a coincidence. 
But that's even gets, this gets even cooler because if you take a look at the frequency for each of these, huh? Wow, look at this. And now it's a slight, just slightly off, and you can, I, you can see I put the frequency and then like what the easy rounding is because you can see these carry digits. You basically got 1.6, then 4.0, then 3.2, then 2.666, then it's almost exactly two, then 1.33, and then 1.14. Okay, it's not the greatest. Then you got 9.99, which is almost exactly one. And then you got 7.99 is almost exactly 8. And you got 6.666 is, yeah, then you got 5.71. Yeah, 5.7 essentially. And then you got 4.99, which comes to 5. The bigger ones, too, come out to 5.7 and 2.86. That's not the great, you know. It's okay, though. But this is just the speed of light in a vacuum. So this is what it'll be for a photon of these lengths, the frequency and period in a vacuum. That's really... <laughs> Come on, that's not a coincidence, but okay, let's just accept maybe it's a coincidence. You know, let's check what it is when it's the speed of light in air, not just the speed of light in vacuum. It's really close, so I'm not even gonna go through them all. You can see it's basically the same. It's just a little bit lower, a little bit off from it. This is where it gets really cool. Are you ready for this? Or are you ready for this? Bam! Continuity error again. I'm not wearing glasses. But look at this. Do you see this? Come on. Like, it's not even just the period is nice, but the frequencies are so clean. Literally 8.3 repeated, 3.3 repeated, 4.16 repeated, 5.0, 6.6666666. Literally one nanosecond, 1.1666 nanoseconds, 1.33333, 1.6666, 2.0, 2.333, 2.6, even though the big ones are nice. Like, then I go over the period and the frequency, like, come on, like, what the heck? Like, 1.2? It was 3.0, 2.4, like bam. Do you see this? Speed of light in water. What? I wrote back and said, oh, holy shit, what the fuck? They didn't know anything about photonics. Not at all. How could they have possibly done this if they didn't know anything about photonics? It's just a coincidence though. Uh, yeah, okay. You'd say, whoa, well, how'd the Egyptians figure out how the speed of light was? How did we measure it, dude? Like. What are you talking about, man? Like... <laughs> and that would be very astute of you. Secondly, the thing that I think is even more shocking about this is the implication that ancient Egyptians used the metric system. About pseudo-archaeology and pseudoscience a lot. Because God knows these videos are a dime a dozen. Pseudoscience pipeline. Pipeline that the algorithm of these apps literally encourages. Cap. No way. Bull. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Honestly, this argument hinges on what kind of crack. Lilo smoking. He's your Lilo psychologist. Believes that our culture does not demand pyramid. There's just no reason to. We have no purpose for the pyramids or otherwise uh, accoutrement to the pyramids. Listen, buddy, you don't need any pyramids. I've seen the evidence. <laughs> Think about what comes after or what came before. And, and we are going to need to worry about it own country and yeah, frankly you know, just keep consuming and consuming and consuming and you know we can all dance on the grave of the planet later who gives a fuck drinking to the downfall of humanity I look like no fucking purpose for the pyramid to you ridiculous I think I rest my case I do think it's very funny though watching archaeology clearly have one source for all of their information just listen to Graham Hancock once Graham Hancock said I think that the aliens that built the pyramids would have used the speed of light and then just you know parroting riddle me this the entire fucking universe used the metric system the aliens that built the pyramids would have used something else as the coordinates of giza i thought i would talk about it and all of its faults that one over and over again and clearly not doing any more digging into any physics basic wave mechanics harmonics and resonances of a guitar string and any other vibrating object does graham hancock look like a fucking physicist to you no no it doesn't i know and clearly not doing any more digging into any particular topic oh what a surprise hmm just Ridiculous. I don't want to silence because <laughs> this it's fucking job security The nice thing about what I do for a living is that as long as there is stupid people I can pay my fucking mortgage got it not true. I know Graham Hancock said physics Absolutely wrong. Milo. Did you do your own research or did you just accoutrement to the tip? I don't we even know what that means No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. <sighs> no, it's not. It's it gets gross. the people going it's it's disgusting. Disgusting. Butterfly effect be crazy. Anyway, come on That's lame dude <laughs>
He just states it like it's facts. Okay, you smug son of a bitch. Because Google told them. Whoa, Milo, but you're you're coming down on him. You're trying to silence him. It's wrong, like a bunch of fucking nerds. Maybe you should have Googled it. And then you wouldn't have had to make a video where he just puts on this persona of being like the smug, cold heart fact kind of guy. Frankly, I think this part that he's putting forward online is kind of a douche. So it's like, we're really gonna trigger some people today. But you kind of get the character that we're working with here. No, I'm not trying to silence Milo. I'm literally just trying to do his own physics research for him. And so because he's gaining his physics input from ancient apocalypse, then Graham Hancock on Joe Rogan, two people who do a terrible job of representing wave mechanics. He thinks he knows what physics stands for, which is absolute bullshit. And I want to make clear that the difference between studying harmonics and resonances of a guitar string and any other vibrating object whole life and what these people are doing is that Milo speaking like they are an authority figure, like they know better than us. Now, I actually do have some pretty immense respect for Milo, but fully disagree with the things that he's saying. The reason we haven't built any pyramids is we have no purpose for them anymore. I do appreciate the fact that he can actually try and postulate his theories and, you know, actually try and back them up with evidence. I don't think his evidence is very good, but at least he's engaging in the scientific method, you know? But you kind of miss out on all the nuance, and instead all you get is like a frat bro, gatekeeper of archaeology, you can be as interested in archaeology as you want, but don't fucking talk about physics. You kind of just end up looking like a goober. And now we put it all together. Here's Philo, both smug and wrong.